The Strange Dr. Weird. Good evening. Come in, won't you? Why, what's the matter? Surely you're not nervous. You are? Then perhaps a story might help calm you. I think I know just the one. It's about a cat, among other things. That's why I call the story The Tiger Cat. My story, The Tiger Cat. Begins in a little homemade laboratory in a great gloomy old house in the suburbs. Young Professor Carl Emery is bending over a cage containing a huge rabbit when the laboratory door opens. Carl, have you seen Ronna, Madame Elsa's cat? She's disappeared and Madame Elsa's worried. Mm, what? Oh, it's you, Laura. No, I haven't seen Ronna. Oh, Carl, how are your experiments coming? I get so little chance to see you to ask you about them. No, I'm getting close, Laura. Look in this cage. That's a rabbit. Why, well, it's as big as a dog. It weighs 40 pounds and it's still growing. My vitamin injections have done that. Then your growth serum's a success. No, not quite. But I will succeed yet. If I can keep my experiments a secret from Madame Elsa. If she knew what I was doing, she'd throw me out of the house. Oh, that crazy idea of hers. That when people die, their souls go into animals. It's insane. It's the old age-old theory of reincarnation, but she believes it absolutely. Then she mustn't find out, that's all. Because once your growth serum is perfected... It'll revolutionize farming. Rabbits as big as horses, chickens as big as ostriches. Why, think how the world's food supply will be increased. And I'll be famous, rich. Then we can admit we're married. Oh, Carl, it's so hard pretending to Madame Elsa that I'm just a maid. That I have no interest in you, her brilliant protege. I know, darling. And it may take months, even years, before my experiments are finished. I know she's left me this house and some money in her will... All our problems would be solved if she'd only die. Oh, 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 that's how you repay my generosity, is it, Carl? Uh, wishing me dead. Uh, Madam Elsa. Yes, Carl. I came in looking for Anna. So you've been deceiving me all these months. Madam Elsa, listen. Get out of this house at once, do you hear? Both of you. Leave this instant. But my animals, my experiments. Elsa, get out. It's obeyed me. Nothing here is yours. I paid for it all. So get out. Get out. Get out! Oh, catch her, Laura. My, my medicine. She's having a heart attack. Carl, get her medicine. She's in her room. No, I won't. Get but Carl, she'll die unless you do. Yes, she must die. To solve our problems. It's the perfect answer. Let it down gently. All right, Carl. My medicine. You're trying to kill me. You're murderers, both of you. Another few seconds, and it'll be all over. Yes. Yes, but you won't escape. You hear? I'll return. I'll return. And... <laughs> Carl. She's dead. And all our problems are solved. We... What the... Oh, it's Rana, her cat. She's been hiding in the cupboard there. She knows we've killed Madame Elsa. Nonsense. She's not... Oh, so that's it. What, Carl? Why, the stork has just visited Rana. She's just given birth to a kitten. That's a peculiar coincidence, isn't it? Madame Elsa dies just as Rana's kitten is born. Carl and Laura were completely exonerated of responsibility for Madame Elsa's death. And so he was able to continue his strange experiments unhampered, with Laura, his wife, assisting him. Carl, every serum so far has been a failure. The rabbits, the guinea pigs, they grow tremendously big and we think we've won. And then... And suddenly they shrink back to their former size, as if to mock us. But we will succeed. We must. Oh, of course, Carl. I guess I'm just a little tired. I... Oh, that kitten again. Why can't we get rid of it, Carl? It's always behind me, always yowling like that, as if it's trying to startle me. Now, Laura. Carl. Madam Elsa believed that when she died, her soul would go into the body of some animal just being born. And that kitten was born at the exact instant Madame Elsa died. Suppose... Suppose her soul is reincarnated in it. Laura, you mustn't be silly. Look at her eyes. They're the same peculiar green Madame Elsa's were. And her fur. 
It's the exact reddish-brown color of Madame Elsa's hair. It can't be a coincidence. Laura, you're being ridiculous. We didn't have to take good care of Rana II by the terms of Madame Elsa's will. I'd use her in one of my experiments. But as we can't touch her, I'm going to get hold of another kitten, the same age, to experiment on. Then, by comparing Rana's weight with the other kittens, I'll know how much faster than normal my serum is making the other one grow. Oh, we must get rid of her. I have a feeling... Laura, my decision is final. Rana the second must not be harmed. <laughs> Laura, look. It's only a month since I injected my serum into this kitten, and she's already twice as big as Rana. I'm going to call it Tigress. The rate she's growing, she'll soon be one. Oh, it, it's wonderful, Carl, but can't we get rid of Rana now, please? For heaven's sake, Laura, are you still harping on Rana? Why, she's just a kitten, perfectly harmless. I tell you, she sits and watches me as if she hated me. As if she were just waiting for the right moment to be revenged on both of us. See, she knows we're talking about her. Laura, if your nerves don't improve soon, I'll have to send you to Bermuda for a rest. Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. I'll try not to be upset. Oh, that's better. I'm going to give Tigress here another injection. And I predict that in one more month, Tigress will be bigger than any house cat ever seen before on this earth. Carl finally had to do as he had threatened and send Laura to Bermuda to get over her, her nervousness. But in her absence, he carried on his experiments alone and was overjoyed to see the kitten he had named Tigress gain in size at an astounding rate. In fact, when Laura returned at the end of three months, Carl had an astonishing sight to show her. Now, Laura, now, be prepared for a surprise when I turn on the light. Then you really succeeded at last, Carl. Succeeded? Look, look there. Uh, Carl, but that can't be Tigris. Uh, oh, you're playing a joke on me. No, I'm not, Laura. In that special cage is the kitten we named Tigris only four months ago. Now she weighs 200 pounds uh, and looks and sounds just as fierce as any wild tiger in the jungles of India. I can't believe it. Look, do you see how small Rana looks standing there beside Tigress' cage? Oh, oh she, she's trying to get out. No, she's not. She's just playing with Rana. She and Rana have become great friends. Rana spends most of the time beside that cage. But I believe that they really talk together. Listen. Well, they are talking to each other. And Carl, look. Rana is pawing at the bolt that keeps the cage shut. So she's trying to open it. Oh, now, Laura, Rana's just playing the way a cat will. Why, I've seen her pawing at that bolt dozens of times. But suppose she did slide it back and the cage came open. Tigress could kill us both. I tell you, Rana's just playing. Oh, no. Rana is trying to slide that bolt back. Laura, am I going to have to send you away? Oh, no, look. She's got it. Rana's pushed the bolt back. Tigress's cage is unlocked. And Tigress is coming out. Quick, I have a revolver in the library. Come on. An instant later, Carl and Laura had slammed and locked the heavy door of the library. And outside it, Tigress roared in baffled rage. She's trying to get in. She's going to kill us. Ron deliberately opened that cage so Tigress could kill us. She had a plan all along. I'll shoot through the door. That'll drive her away. Oh, you just made her more angry. Oh, she's getting in. She's going to kill us. Look out. Oh. Carl and Laura were found some hours later, and they were quite dead. Ripped to pieces by the strange tiger-like animal the police found in the room, killed by revolver bullet. In fact, the only living creature anywhere about was a reddish-brown kitten with green eyes, like Madame Elsa. She was calmly sitting beside Carl's body and purring to herself. Have you been unkind to some cat lately? You better be careful. There's no telling. Oh, you're leaving. We'll drop in again soon. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house of Dr. Weir. (laughs) 